All right, welcome everybody to the San Diego Supercomputer Center booth. We are going to get started here in just a minute with our lightning tutorials. So we're going to be having three brief tutorials and a, and a short demo to give you a little taste of some topics in, um, in high performance computing and our education outreach and training activities. And we have some beautiful SDSC t-shirts that we are giving away. Um, so why don't you sit in, learn something, and get a get, get a shirt. All right, whoop, sorry, before we get started, um, we lost our connection again. We were up. Oh, there we are. Okay. All right, so we're gonna be doing, we're, we're gonna be using um, Jupyter Lab to, to do the demos. So everybody just go to this URL, Jupyter, that's Jupyter with a Y, dash sc18.sdsc.edu. And that will take you to a page where you can log in with your, um, but with your GitHub, your username and password. So go ahead, give everybody a chance to get there. You're going to, well, once you get to the page, you'll, you'll see a button to, to launch your server, click that, and then you should have a um, running instance of, of Jupyter uh, Jupiter Lab. Okay, so I'm gonna just make that a little bit larger, but everybody, everybody should be able to follow along. Okay, is anybody having any problems connecting? Um, everybody able to connect okay? And you can all hear me in the back? Good, all right, so we're gonna dive in. So the first topic we're going to cover is going to be a very quick introduction to parallel computing with Python. We're using a library called Dask. Um, to, to me, I've, you know, I've been doing parallel computing for a long time, for a little over 20 years. I'm um, using MPI, OpenMP, um, some of the parallelization schemes that you have in R. But I think that the Python Dask might be the easiest and most intuitive approach I've ever seen to parallel computing. So so, DAS, so, so what DAS does is it's really a, um, it, it's a DAG engine, a DAG a directed acyclic graph. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna use DAS to construct, to constru construct a dependency tree for tasks. We're gonna, we're gonna use something that they call delayed execution so that we um, set up these tasks the, um, the, the, da the Dask engine will figure out what the dependencies are, assign these to, to individual cores or threads, and execute them as needed. So we're gonna go through three simple examples. In the first one, we're gonna look at out-of-core computing. So if you're following, following along with the notebook, we are going to try to read and, read and process a file that, that is too large to fit into memory. So um, we're gonna start off and if you haven't used um, Jupyter Notebooks before, um, it's very, very, very easy to use. Once you have it open, I'm sorry, I need to back up a step. I realize that, ahead. You should see, um, you, you should see a menu over here with, um, with, with three tutorials, multi-threaded, machine learning, and, and OpenMP. So you're gonna wanna double click on the first one, on module one, that's going to be the um, the, the multi-threading, and you want to click on the uh, on the first link there, so the one to out of core computing. So we're going to be doing is we're going to start off. We go to a cell. You'll you'll notice if you haven't worked with Jupyter notebooks before that we have a that we have a mix of code and um, and, and documentation. So we're going to go to those um, go to those cells that contain the contain code. Just click your mouse there, shift return to, to execute. So you can see we're gonna be operating on a file. It's about, um, about 150 gigabytes in size. We're gonna be running this on Comet, our supercomputer at SCSC. And the, the, these nodes only have about 128 gigabyte, gigabytes of memory. After you account for overhead for the OS and so on, probably have about 120 gigabytes. So this file's not gonna fit in there. Gonna to go to the next cell. We're going to import H5 
H5 Pi. This is the um, this is a Python library for working with HDF5 files, um, import OS, and we are going to um, co construct the path to that to, to that file. We we'll go down here, that next cell, and we're going to um, get some of the statistics on that file. So we execute that, and we see that it contains almost 20 billion um, double precision floating point numbers. So now we're gonna we're gonna jump ahead. I'm gonna talk a little bit in um, in one of the next modules about Dask arrays. Um, for for now, think of a Dask array as being the um, the Python parallel computing equivalent of a NumPy array. So it gives you a lot of the same functionality, except that it's already designed to work with the with the Dask with, with the Dask um, DAG execution engine. So we're gonna we're gonna define we're gonna find this Dask array. We're gonna find chunk size be equal to, to one times 10 to the seventh. So rather than trying to read in all 120 billion um, elements, we're gonna break this into chunks of, of, of um, 10 million elements. And then we are going to, um, we're gonna create our Dask array. Um, one bit of syntax that may look just a little funny there is where we set chunks and then in parentheses equal to chunk size, comma, close paren. So this is one of the quirks of, of Python. Um, the argument, the argument for chunks has to be a tuple. And if we want to get a if we want to get a one-dimensional tuple, we need that trailing comma and then close in parentheses. So we're going to execute that, print the number of chunks, so we can see that our that, that are 19.5 um, billion floating point numbers are going to be divided into 1,950 distinct chunks. And then finally, in the, sorry, finally, penultimately, in the next, in the, in the next um, cell, we are going to, um, we're, we're going to define the computation and the operation that we want to do, but it's not going to be executed immediately. So see that I'm, and one, one thing that we did here, just to make the exercise go a little bit faster, is we're not gonna operate on all of the chunks, we're just gonna operate on the first 120 of them. So we do this, and we see that it wasn't executed. We basically set up the problem. So now we're going to go to the next cell, execute this, I'm gonna use 24 workers. I would say on your own, play around with this, look at the timings with um, 24, 12, six workers. So I do this, and if I remember right, this is going to take about, this is gonna take about a minute. So, so any, any questions about the exercise that we're doing right now? All right, so in the interest of time, since we started a little, oh, actually do, sorry, ran, ran much faster than I expected. Last time it took about, it, it took about 60 seconds. Um, this time it took, let me make that a little bit larger. It, it took us um, just under four seconds to run. Let's try running that again with um, 12 workers instead of 24. We picked 24 because we have 24 compute nodes on, I'm sorry, 24 cores per compute node on Comet. Run that again, and we should see that it's gonna take about twice as long. And, oh, actually about the same. So you could, you could play around with the timings on, my, on your own. That one went, went much quicker than expected. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at Dask at Dask graphs. So I talked a little bit about how we set up a directed acyclic graph, describing the dependencies between the um, between the tasks that we need to do. So we already mentioned this in the um, sorry, and we had gone to the we had gone to the second se second exercise. Um, we already talked a little bit about Dask arrays. These behave a lot like um, like NumPy arrays. They'll have They'll have, I'm sure, pretty much all of the all of that functionality, except they're designed to work with the with the Dask DAG engine. So we're going to import we're gonna import the Dask array, and we're going to illustrate um, using the Dask arrays the directed acyclic graph of tasks that's constructed. So we're going to construct a, a very small array. This is just a array containing ones, 15 elements. But now notice though that we're that we're setting a chunk size. If this was num if this if we were using NumPy, this line right here would have been 
NP or NumPy.1 and then 15, saying that we want an array of 15 ones. In this case, though, notice that we're breaking it into chunks of size 5. So we're, what we're going to do is end up with three chunks of, of size 5. And next, we're going to go down and visualize what the, um, what, what the graph looks like. So, so in this case, we have our we, we have our three we, we have our three threads, and each of them is going to be constructing a portion of, of that array of, of 15 ones. And now, if we want to do a, a slightly more complicated operation, let's say we're going to take every, each element of that array and increment it by one. Go to the next stage, and we see that we have a um, little little more complicated graph. Or again. We're, we're defining the way array of ones, and each thread is then going to, um, to, do, the, to do the incrementing of, the, of those values. Um, the, the arrows, the arrows indicate, indicate the dependency. So, for example, we can't do the addition until after we, we've called the, um, called the method for the ones. So in this case, it's a pretty simple graph, since everything can be done, done independently. But let's say that we want to calculate the sum now oh, over the elements of, the, of that dask array. And I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller for now, so we can see it. So we can see the beginning. The beginning of our call graph looks looks like what we had before, where we're initially initializing the array of runs. Ones we're doing, where we're um, we're, we're incrementing the values, and then we're calculating a sum. We're, we're we're calculating a partial sum within each one of those threads, and then finally, we we need to we need to calculate the sum over the over those partial sums. So we finally get to this sum aggregate function, which can't execute until we've completed all three of the, um, until we've finished evaluating the partial sums for the, um, for, for the three different threads. So now we're gonna look at something a little more complex. We're going to create another array, that this time a 15 by 15 array. We're just gonna populate it with ones again. And let's look at the calculation of the transpose of that array, and then incrementing every each element by one. So we do this. We see that we have a um, that we have a more complicated graph. We have um, we, we actually bro broke up our array into into nine chunks. We have a three by three or array of chunks, and again, each of these can be done independently. We calculate our transpose. We and then independently increment all the values of, of those arrays. Um, but let's look at something a little more complicated. Th this time we're going to take an array and add it to its transpose. So in this case, we're going to have a lot more dependencies. And this just shows you what, what our graph looks like. So, so you're, you're not typically going to be looking at the call graphs. In many realistic applications, the call graph is just going to get too, is going to get too complex. I'll show this in the next one. But it's nice to know that you have this option so you can go back, so you can figure out what task is doing, how it's taking your problem and laying it out. So finally, we're going to do something a little more, um, a little more complicated involving the dot product minus the mean. And you see here that we now have a graph that is um, completely completely unintelligible. Even if I would even if I would blow this up, you still wouldn't be able to read it. Hopefully you're following along. But it just shows you though the com how, how complex these graphs could get. And you know, as far as as far as the Dask execution engine though is, con is concerned, this is no problem. You know, it's represented as a DAG, and it just it just handle, handles the dependencies. Um, note though that we haven't that we haven't done any calculation yet. Um, we've just set up the graph. We haven't we, we've delayed all of the execution. And finally, if we want to execute this, we call the compute method. And there we go. All right. So, so any questions about visualizing, by visualizing the um, directed acyclic graphs that are used by DAS? All right. And we are going to move on to the third example now. Um, if you want to double click on multitask, and this is going to cover um, something that we, um, some of the functionality that we've seen already. We're going to start off just so that we don't get the. Um, yeah, get the get the automatic intel parallelization. 
We're going to set the um, MKL math kernel library number of threads equal to one. Go into our next cell. We're going to, to import NumPy as NP. We're going to import Dask. Let me make that a little bit bigger. Import Dask arrays as as, um, as as DA. We're going to take an array and we're going to fill it with a um, the fill an array of 20,000 by 4,000 elements with random numbers. Oh, sorry. So I forgot to execute that cell. There we go. And now that should work. Uh, we're going to use a little bit of Python, um, Jupyter Notebook magic. Um, we're going to use the we're going to use percent poos, and this is going to tell us about the about the um, variables and objects that we've declared. And we can see that we have um, our array A. It's a um, NumPy n-dimensional array of size 20,000 by 4,000, and that is. Eight, sorry, 80 million, 80 million elements. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna do some calculations on that array. Um, and just take a quick look at, at a portion of that array. Confirm that it's filled with random numbers. So now we're gonna perform an operation element by element on on on, el, on all elements of that array. We're gonna we're gonna create a new array B. That is element by element, the square of the element of A plus the sine of A times value of A times log of A. It's not really doing any useful work. We're just doing something that's going to take some time. Um, I, I begin the line with percent time. So that again is some Python magic that will give us the execution time for that, for, for that statement. And that should run pretty quick. We can see that that took about 1.2 seconds. Um, so now we're going to do now we're going to do this with Dask instead. In this case, we're going to create a Dask array, but it's going to be a chunked array. It's going to look a lot like what we did with NumPy, except in this time we're going to break our array into chunks of 2,000 by 1,000. And then in the next cell, we're going to see how many blocks we have. We're going to call the call, call the, the num blocks method. And we can see that we have an array of 10 by 4, 10 by 4 blocks. So we have 40 blocks. What we're going to be doing now is taking those blocks, we're going to be assigning them to different threads and do the execution. So first, let's set up our problem. Remember that in Dask, we have, we have a delayed execution. So all we're doing here, when we say compute B, we're not actually computing it. We are setting up the problem. We're letting Dask create, the, um, create, create that directed acyclic graph. And now we were going to try running it with different number, different numbers of threads. So we start off with one worker. See that? Okay. It's, all right. See, it took about um, 4.8 seconds. A little bit longer than the um, than the um, that than the NumPy version. But let's go to let, let's go to four workers. See, we're now down about 1.4 seconds. 12 workers down to 800 milliseconds, and finally 24 workers, and we're down to about 640 milliseconds. So finally, to convince ourselves that the, um, that the NumPy and the DAS calculations are consistent, we're going we're, we're gonna, to um, put an assert statement in here. And instead of calculating for equality between all of the elements, since we're doing floating point arithmetic, we're going to use the, the um, NumPy all close function, which will look for, we'll do a comparison to within a tolerance. So we do this, and we find, um, we, we get no error message from that, so our DAS calculation was consistent. So that was a real quick introduction of parallel computing with DAS.